What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another SK Wealth Academy podcast. And today I am going to discuss the single two worst mistakes investors can make. Now, before I get started, I want to remind all of you to, that want to keep in touch with me and uh, discover all my fresh content that I create and upload for free to please stop now go to the link in the show notes below at malamalama.com forward slash wordpress or to the side you can see that link and please subscribe to my free newsletter when you go to that site you'll see a link that says subscribe to my free newsletter or you may receive a pop-up box uh, in which you can sign up and the reason i'm saying this is because I really feel like my days are numbered here on YouTube. So uh, when you get banned from YouTube, then you can't even come back online and make a, you know, another follow-up video to tell people, hey, I've been banned, so you know, follow me at these other sites that you migrate to. So in order to prevent that, please, please stop now for, just hit the pause button, go sign up for my new free newsletter, and that way you can always discover where I'm uploading new content. Okay, so let's get started. Now today I'm gonna to discuss the single two worst mistakes investors make and why you always want to avoid these mistakes. So this is regardless of whether the asset invested in is Bitcoin and cryptos, real estate, stocks, bonds, art, even fine art, commodities, or any other investment. And these two mistakes are number one, to believe asset prices are not rigged in the asset they own. And number two, believe that because one made a lot of money when buying and owning an asset during a price mania that led to a parabolic price rise that you mistake luck for skill. So I'm gonna break each of these two mistakes down. So let's address mistake number one first. So I said mistake number one was believing that asset prices are not rigged in the market in which you own. So I'm gonna go back and tell you a brief history of the US stock market, okay? So the Security Exchange Office was created in the 1790s in the United States to allow for stock trades to commence. I guarantee you in the 1790s, the stock markets were being rigged from day one. Now, and the same thing applies to when futures markets eventually came into creation later. From day one, the people that created these markets were rigging prices. Now, the American Stock Exchange, which eventually was bought out by the New York Stock Exchange, was created in 1911. And I guarantee you from day one of the American Stock Exchange, stocks for prices were being manipulated. And NASDAQ, which was the first electronically traded market in the United States, has actually only been around since the 1970s. Now, let me tell you this one legendary story. Lucky Luciano spent one day on Wall Street, observed rampant fraud and criminal systemic criminality created by bankers with impunity from prosecution of their crimes. And he later famously stated, I joined the wrong family. And when he says that, because if you don't know who Lucky Luciano was, he was a famous mobster back in the early 1900s, I think. And by saying he joined the wrong family, he meant the wrong criminal family, because as a mobster, he said the U.S. Justice Department was always pursuing him and trying to put him in prison. But he stated he spent one day on Wall Street, observed bankers committing greater monetary crimes than he had ever committed in his life, but he said, yet yeah, nobody was trying to prosecute them. He said they ran their criminality with immunity from prosecution. So he said, I joined the wrong crime family. So don't be mistaken that, you know, whoever created the people in the oligarchy that created stock markets, bond markets, futures markets, commodity markets, they've always had this for us, by us mentality. So it's by us and it's only for us to make profits. It's not for the common serfs or the proletariats. And it's not for us. So don't be mistaken, you know, by thinking that everyone, you know, they always send the narrative, everyone can enjoy great profits. And you, I know there are people, common people that have made great profits by me speaking that most of the profits are always concentrated by, right with the richest oligarchs that own most of the stock market, own most of the 
you know, futures in the commodities markets, almost to the bonds in the bond markets, almost to the real estate and so on and so on and so on. So again, you know, let me just as a very quick aside, if you lived in the 1990, I mean, you lived in New York in the 1990s, you definitely had heard of FUBU, which was a, a famous street apparel uh, brand that was started by Damon John. And he started just by selling snapbacks, you know, for, I don't know, five bucks a pop or whatever it was back then on the street. And he grew that into a huge, huge kind of hip hop apparel brand that eventually he was selling hundreds of millions of dollars in sales per year. And uh, this was a funny story because I you know, said all these markets, uh, these financial markets have this for us, by us mentality, not for the common people. And so that's what FUBU stand for, standed for, F-U-B, for us, by us, right? And Damon John was from uh, this neighborhood in Queens, New York called Hollis, Queens. And I believe that's actually where LL Cool J was from because the, the hip hop icon LL Cool J used to do ads for, for uh, FUBU. And at least he was from, I know he grew up in Queens, if not, you know, that particular neighborhood of Hollis, Queens. But he did, LL did a, an ad campaign, a TVC campaign for Gap, which is a large, if you're not American, it's a large retail apparel, you know, big box brand in America. And at the end of his commercial, he said, for us, by us. So he was putting in some free advertising for his friend that owned FUBU in a Gap commercial. So it's crazy. And the Gap executives didn't even notice. So that TVC ran for weeks before someone informed them, hey, you know that your brand spokesperson doing your commercials actually advertising another brand within your own commercial. So that would like be like a model that does a print ad for Chanel, like a Chanel handbag rocking Prada gear in the print ad, right? And on the down low, trying to advertise for Prada for free in a Chanel ad. So that's just a funny story about Forest Bias. I don't know why that popped into my head. But anyways, okay, so let's look at, uh, so that's fault number one, right? You have to realize that all markets are rigged in price. You know, some of the newer markets, like, you know, the crypto markets are basically like infants, right? They're like neonatal babies compared to, uh, you know, markets that, uh, stock markets and bond markets that existed for over a hundred years in the United States. So people don't think that those at their asset prices are rigged there. And of course they are. They're rigged on the way up. They're rigged on the way down. They're constantly rigged by the biggest whales. And so, okay, let me just tell you this one story real quickly about a friend of mine who bought Bitcoin at uh, 19,000 at the end of 2017. And when it went to 20,000, I said, hey, you better sell because I really think 20,000 is a top. And all my, my patrons know because I told my patrons I believe that was a top as well. And when it uh, descended back to down to 19,000, I told him a second time, hey, you better sell. Just get out even because I think this price is going to be cut in half. And of course, it was cut in half. And I know he's, he held on to at least 10,000. I'm not sure if he held on after it was cut, in ha cut by more than half again back if he wrote it all the way down to 3,000. And the reason being, when I asked him, uh, hey, why are, you, why are you holding on to this? When I told you that I understand manipulation on these markets, I understand how these markets were rigged higher on the way up, and also that the futures markets, which was just introduced at the end of 2017, that central bankers were going to use that to rig uh, prices all the way down. So that's why I, you know, made that call at 20,000 at the top because I knew central bankers there was some really shady price action going on in the Bitcoin futures markets and that predicated my prediction of the price being cut in half two times. So that's what led to that prediction. And he said, because every single Bitcoin owner I know is a hodler, you know, that's the crypto term for holding forever, H-O-D-L, I'm a hodler, right? So it means you hold and you never sell. So I said, you know what? Everyone that goes with the masses of the lemmings or the masses of cows or whatever you want to call them, they are the ones that really never end up clearing profits from their investments. Because I said, you have to think about it, right? Who are the people that make the most money? The people that make the most money to 
they're, I said, it doesn't even matter if you're talking real estate, cryptos, bonds, commodities, whatever, are the people that buy when everyone else is selling and that sell when everyone else is buying. So I said, look, what is everyone doing right now in this in this Bitcoin meaning asset? Everyone's buying, therefore you should be selling. So it doesn't matter that you just bought, you bought at the wrong time. So you shouldn't be believing all those experts on TV saying that cryptocurrency will go to at least 40, 50, $100,000 in 2018. I said, don't believe the hype. So uh, number two, just to move on to no number two. So that's just the story of the asset rigging, right? So number two, the rule is uh, the second worst mistake investors make or equally as worst mistake is that people that believe because they hopped on board, which you know is a good thing. They can at least spot you know price mania when it's coming. Uh, and they make a lot of money, but only paper, right? Because it doesn't become real until you actually liquidate and sell. That they believe that the money they made was due to skill, when in fact they've only been lucky. Now, I'm not saying that there's no people that are skilled. Of course, there's people that are skilled that also hop on board and make a lot of money. But you know what the difference is between them and the people that just made money by pure luck, but attribute it to their own personal skill. It's the people that made it due to pure luck and attribute it to skill always lose all that money on the way down because they stay in and they stay in too long whereas people that are actually skilled will sell and get out before the masses stampede out of that asset so they actually keep their profits and so um i want to tell you again this interesting story because uh Yesterday, I wanted to see in the markets what was going on with the AMC short squeeze because really I've been following the GameStop short squeeze a lot more than the AMC uh, short squeeze. And so I just typed into YouTube AMC short squeeze. That was it. And the first video that came out, so I, I think from the algorithms, it was the most, you know, was trending at the time was, uh, and I'm not going to call like anyone out by their channel name or anything like that because I don't like calling people out, but I'm just, this is uh, 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 an example, I think, of which we can learn a lot from, okay? So when I clicked on that video and just listened, I just listened for like five minutes what this person was saying. And he apparently had a lot of followers, a lot of subscribers, and tens of thousands of people watching him uh, in that video that, was, that I watched. And he basically said, you know, and a lot of power to him, okay? But I think this is an, an example of someone that got lucky that thinks it's skill because he mentioned he, uh, his uh, average buy-in price to AMC was about seven and a half dollars. And at the, yesterday's morning at market open, it was trading at around 17. So he was complaining of how in after hours markets and pre-market trading, the prices all was up for the last couple days. I don't know, maybe the last several days in AMC because I told you I haven't been following. But then when uh, the market opened in New York, the price always would fall and he said, he said, don't worry, because it's only Monday. So first of all, what does that even mean? It's only Monday. He said, we have the rest of the week for it to go up. You also have the rest of the week for it to go down, right? So that's not understanding risk at all. And, and saying, why is the price always rising pre-markets trading and after hours trading, but always falls when market trading, again, shows no understanding of risk, right? Because that's just basic, basic knowledge if you're an investor, right? That, that during pre-market and after hours trading, you have low volume in trading that means low liquidity so it's very easy for price manipulators to move the price around right so that is not the real sign of where the price is heading although i felt like he didn't come out and say that that was you know why he was holding on because the pre-market after hours market trading was always going up so so um so that's a reason to hold on uh but People know, like for example, in silver and gold futures, right? Every time people that are know that have been have lots of experience know that usually the bankers through their you know puppets of the big global banks, you know the central bankers, will have these big global banks go into the market, dump tons of futures contracts during uh, after really what's after our like trading in the futures markets, right? And during times of very low liquidity, where it's very easy to push the price down, push it around, which happened, a, you know, a lot of times during like Sunday evening trading in the gold and silver futures market. So we all know that. So if that's something that's basic, if he doesn't understand, that means he doesn't 
really understand risk in the market. So that's why I made that conclusion. But uh, so he said basically he was going to he had a sell limit at uh, order at thirty five dollars a share for AMC. So I was thinking really what he should have is a stop limit order on the way down right from 17 because i looked at it this morning and it was like at 13 so i'm pretty sure he's still holding on and i'm um, thinking it will go to 35 because he said that's when i'll sell when it reaches 35 dollars. that's what, when i'm going to sell uh, um so again uh and and to be fair like i don't know what he's thinking but i'm just i am just extrapolating that i don't think because he looked pretty young it doesn't mean that you can't understand risk if you're young, but I'm just saying that really to understand, to keep your profits, I've always found this as a rule of investing, to keep your profits, you have to have experience at least going through one asset price crash in some area, whether it's stocks like in 2008, bonds, commodities, oil, gold, silver, aluminum, like you have to have experience going through price uh, period uh, very significant price crashes to truly understand risk because if, if you only trade in one prices go up 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 you typically don't understand risk at all then again to be fair he had a guest that countered his viewpoint and his guest had I, I believe was had a much more sensible people will say it's conservative but no it's it's rational and he said hey i have a strategy that will minimize your profits he said just you have to average down if the price keeps falling just liquidate a tranche every time amc price falls so i imagine he did that because the amc price fell from 17 to 13 yesterday so i imagine his guest at least i hope because he was on this you know, chatting away when the markets were live. I hope he like had his computer open when was uh, either had put um, stop limit orders that were selling or just uh, if he's watching markets, of course, better to stop limit orders just to swatch the price and sell when the price reaches his points of uh, triggering sells of certain tranches. So, but the only thing I disagree with this person, he said, this will minimize profits. Not at all. Well, maximize profits if the hit, if the price keeps heading back down to eight dollars, because then you would have. Well, I don't. This person didn't say what his average buying price for AMC was, but uh, again, if he keeps profits, no matter if the profits keep getting smaller and smaller percentage wise by taking the strategy of selling every step of the way down till he has nothing left. You have profits, that's an important thing. Versus if you ride it all the way down and never sell, then you have no profit. So I don't, I, the only thing I didn't agree was assessment that this is a strategy that minimizes profits. No, because it gives you profits, it keeps you from losses. So that's not minimizing profits. I think it's just rational, right? So again, what separates the men from the boys and women from the girls in the investment world is that uh, the boys and girls will mistake luck is skill and uh, people can have lots of luck, right? And riding, as a, even, oh, let me just say this one thing with the, with the AMC stock. Even if it goes to 35, right? And that, and that person makes a lot of money. It doesn't mean that I'm wrong and he was right in the assessment of risk. The risk is still there, you know? So even if it doesn't keep going lower from 70 to 30 to 10 and keep going down, 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 this person keeps holding, it doesn't mean and only that doesn't necessarily make me right either, right? But it makes what it makes is my assessment of risk correct, right? Because I'm saying there's a real possibility, right? That 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 share price when over the 17 could keep going down, 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 down. Because you know I said that also with uh, the GameStop shares. I told that you know to my patrons um, because I saw a lot of of. Uh, information people stating when game share went to five hundred dollars in uh i think it was pre-market or it might have been after hours right after hours is trading is the market that exists after the u.s stock market closes pre-market is obviously just what it sounds like you know it opens up before the market trading opens up before the market officially opens at 9 30 a.m new york time so i think it was after hours trading went to 500 so uh people were saying that uh, it literally is near impossible for this price not to keep going higher because they said the short sellers have no way out. The only way out to minimize their losses is to keep buying more shares that will force the price higher. 
And when I heard that, I was like, that is ridiculous. The, the only people that make that statement are people that don't have any experience in markets, right? And so, but a lot of people made those statements. I saw like posted on threads, on boards, talking about the stock on different art. People even wrote that, you know, statements you know, very similar to that and, and published articles. So I'm sure if you, if you go search for it, like search for article saying like uh, soaring, and you have to search for like uh, a few days ago, soaring game stock. Uh, stock and will keep going higher or something like that and you'll find people that you know made these comments that I'm discussing now so I told my patrons look that's ridiculous there's always risk these people have no experience don't listen to them that because that I said the share price can easily go down as quickly as it went up because number one people don't understand risk that's number one people number two people don't understand that the people that really control the markets they don't understand the means and mechanisms they will take to avoid, you know, uh, just getting continually smashed. Not that I was not on the side. I was on the side of all the short squeezers. But I'm saying that should not negate you understanding risk uh, that is real. Um, so let me see. Is there anything else that I want to say? Yeah, just like that That person saying that is that you can say the short sellers, the only way they could minimize their losses, which is not true, was to buy more stock to cover their losses and their getting stuck in a vicious cycle because buying more stock would cause the price to go from 500 to 600 and then they would have to keep buying more stock because the losses on their uh, short sales would be increasing and they ha it would be a vicious cycle that keep driving the price higher and higher and higher and higher and that was like almost the only possible outcome. Uh, again, and people that say stuff like this, you know they don't really have experience in understanding risk and market. And uh, I think that is about all I want to say, other than, you know, of course, all of you know that the bad way to invest is to just go with the masses are doing. And the masses always make these two worst mistakes of investors. Um, so don't go with what the masses are doing. It doesn't mean that if you're contrarian, you're going to be correct 100% of the time. Sometimes the masses are right. But I'm saying that you shouldn't just do what you decide to do because the majority of people are doing that. That is not a reason that should ever drive your investing because luck happens all the time. You know, I saw in when I lived in California uh, in the early 2000s, you know, there are people I knew that bought a house, the market like went up, tripled in like five years and they saw it, they sold it. And, uh, but I know people that never sold who also said, oh yeah, yeah, I saw this coming. I saw this was all skill. I knew the real estate market was gonna triple. That's why I bought. And yet they never sold their house and they rode the market real estate crash and lost like 50% of their gains on the way down. So you can't say you're skilled on the way up but not be skilled enough to take your profits when you have them. Um, so those are the lessons of today. If you feel this message will help any of your family and friends, please pass it on to them. And remember, always please subscribe to my free newsletter in case I get taken off of whatever social media platform you're listening to me in case I take, get taken down. You can always keep track of where I'm posting content by subscribing to my free newsletter at malamalama.com forward slash WordPress. And finally, since all my content that I create requires hours and hours of my time, and usually when I upload content, I'm waking up at maybe 4 a.m. because that's like the time I have, 4 to 6 a.m. to create such content. And if you want to kick me back something, an appreciation, if you ever heard anything that really you've learned from, uh, please consider becoming a patron of mine at patreon.com forward slash SK Wealth Academy or donating to my GoFundMe campaign at gofundme.com forward slash F for fight forward slash SK Wealth Academy. Always remain intensely curious. Always remain immensely courageous. Take care.